Hey, welcome back to Head First Fishing. I'm Captain Joe. I got a really exciting video for you today. I'm here at Black Tip Boat Works in Pinellas Park, Florida, and I want to introduce you to my good friend, Mr. Paul Fleming. How's it going, Joe? Black Tip Boat Works. Yeah, man. Good to see you. Thanks for letting us come into the shop today. Black Tip Boat Works is a new boat builder here in the local Pinellas County area, and uh, they got a lot of exciting things going on here and some really beautiful purpose-built fishing boats here that they're working on and they're just flying out the factory as fast as you can build them basically. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, people are just snatching them up left and right. Again, very excited to be here today. Tell uh, tell our viewers uh, a little bit about yourself and about your background and, uh, and about Black Tip. So I've been in the marine industry for kind of going on 20 years. Um, I started real young, went, put myself through technical school, uh, became into, you know, got into rigging and mechanics. Uh, so master tech for mercury marine for quite a few years um and then you know had my own business for a while got into manufacturing with intrepid i uh, did that for almost 14 years and that's a local company too they're intrepid. also a local company yep and um you know branched all that knowledge um, of rigging and manufacturing and mechanics into you know into helping to build black tip boatworks um you know i'm a you know my business partner craig um he's uh, he's he had a vision um, and his vision was Black Tip Boatworks. And over the over the years, we've kind of bounced some ideas together. And one day he called me up out of the blue and said, hey man, he says, wanna, wanna meet for dinner? And I said, yeah, let's do it. Next thing you know, hey, this is what I wanna do. I wanna bring you in. And here we are, we're almost a year uh, a, a year later into the birth of the company and exciting it's uh it's been a it's been a ro roller coaster ride but man yeah. we're doing we're doing great uh got a great group of uh customers and a great group of guys working here and uh yeah i mean it's uh the, the industry is strong right now so oh, yeah. we're, we're doing great oh yeah let's get into some of these models and let's uh, give you an overview of each one we got three different models here we got an 18 flat skiff we got a 21 bay boat and there's a 30 foot offshore boat in the works right now and it is looking absolutely gorgeous let's go ahead and check out some of these models paul tell me about this flats boat that's behind us here this is a really good looking boat i love the, the lines on it i like the, the casting deck i like the colors what's going on with this 18 flats boat so this is our this is our 18 foot flats boat it's uh in my opinion mind you i'm a little biased it's the best flats boat on the market wow uh, it's everything, a bold statement. It is a bold statement, and when you run it and you actually get to experience the ride on it, it uh, it really speaks for itself. Wow. Uh, every boat we build here, whether it's the 18 flats boat or our other models, everything is custom built for our customers. They pick the color, they pick the options, and the boat is really tailored for them. Okay. So would you say this flats boat is the kind of boat that someone would want to get if they want to run to the other side of the bay on a choppy day? This boat will get them there. Absolutely. So you have to take the good and the bad when it comes to a skiff. Right. You've got a, the, the technical pulling skiffs, which are designed to get in six to eight inches of water. The shallowest of water. And the shallowest of water. But on the same token, you got to be able to get to that shallow water. So we designed the boat to float in 12 inches of water and but be able to get yourself across a bay in a two to three foot chop comfortably and dry. Right. So if you're floating in 12 inches, that means you got a couple of inches underneath the hole there. So you're getting pretty darn skinny. Yeah. And that's gonna get you to those redfish on those real low tides, uh, some of those snook and those isolated potholes and things like that. That boat is gonna get you there. Uh, what? Tell us about the color combo here. I, I really like the colors on this boat. So this boat, um, the customer wanted just a bold, dark boat. Um, so we did the black Supreme on the hull. Okay. Um, the dark gray, he did a two-tone uh, cap. So it's dark gray to match the console. Okay. And then whisper gray for the non-skid. So nice. it really, you know, all th those three colors really, really snap together really well and really accent the, the right. lines of the boat. Very sharp, masculine looking boat. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely is, that's for sure. <laughs> Very cool. And I, I can see it's got some really nice rod tubes, uh, rod storage there underneath that walk, uh, walk, uh, walk through gunnel. Uh, so yeah, that's really nice. I'm already seeing a couple of features. Um, let's come in and get a little bit closer to this model so we can see a couple of the key points of this boat. So anybody that knows flat skiffs, they'll see a lot of features here that are familiar. But one thing you probably won't see 
uh, often is a dedicated fly rod box. Tell me about this thing. So, as you mentioned, most skiffs, this is a, a just not there. Um, and it's wasted space in my opinion. There's just, there's, there's never anything here. So why not access a fly rod box? So this has a tube that goes all the way to the bow. So you can easily get the longest of fly rods in there. Uh, this particular customer asked for a tube going backwards, a short tube, because he's not a fly fisherman, mm -hmm. but still has a spinning reel with small guides. So he's able to push it in this way and slide the butt back in and drop his his uh, small spinning reel in here. And these are all lockable. So what's nice is if you're out on a, uh, on a fishing trip and you're going out and you decide you want to stop someplace for lunch or you've got that nice expensive uh, fly reel sitting in there and you're at a gas station or a bait stop, you know that those things are, are, are locked securely. Absolutely, and, and fly rods, they're so long they require different storage than your Correct. standard inshore fishing tackle that rods are anywhere from seven to eight feet, but fly rods are you know, nine feet, 10 feet or sometimes. It, it, yeah, and there's actually, I mean, some of your big tarpon rods are 12, 14 feet long, and in a boat that doesn't have dedicated storage for them, that sucker's leaning up against here, the rod tips are laying on the deck, somebody doesn't see it, they step it, you know, they break it. I mean, some of those rods are several hundred dollars. So. Exactly, you gotta take care of your, your expensive equipment for sure, you worked hard for it, might as well have good storage for it. So what would you say is the next coolest feature about this boat? Joe, it's gotta be the live well. The live well. I love good live wells. Yeah, anybody that fishes inshore and does live baiting loves a good live well. Uh, this boat, we, we like to say, is it's an inshore boat with offshore mind. Um, the bait well in this boat is 30 gallons, That's and good. it's a pressurized live well like an offshore boat. That's really important. That actually keeps your bait lively, or it keeps them from getting beat up when you're going through rough waters. So there's another functionality of this live well that's very unique to black tip, and that is our flow gate. That's the way we actually drain the water in the live well to help keep your bait uh, alive longer. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, let's go on in here. So I'm looking at this live well, and I really like the overall design I'm seeing. Give me some detail about what I'm looking at. So it's an oval bait well, so it allows the, the, the water to, to flow around um, and keep the bait alive longer so they're not stuck in a corner. Um, the big feature of this live well is the flow gate. The mere fact that that flow gate has holes throughout the entire water column, I see, yeah. it cleans the entire water column. So when you have a, a full bait well and that bait starts to defecate in there, when they create that ammonia and it sinks to the bottom, if that live well were to have a standpipe like traditional boats, you're only cleaning the top of the water column. Right. So this allows the entire water column to be cleaned at all times, therefore leaving you with fresh water in your bait well 24 seven. That is really key. Another good thing about that, I would think, is because it has the drain capability from the top of the water column to the bottom of the water column, is inevitably you're gonna suck up some flats grass while you're out there. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get debris and stuff coming in there. So you've got good drainage, you know, from the top of the water to the bottom water. Absolutely. You know, with standpipe drains and, and drains that are mounted to the walls, you gotta be really uh, mindful of the grass that comes in because you can eventually get a live well overflow. Correct. Because there's not enough water leaving the well. Correct. So that is a really, really good design, I think. Well, when you talk about water overflow in a bait well, um, that thought process has gone into this live well as well. Because this is a pressurized live well, like an offshore boat, so when you're running across the bay in that two to three foot chop, that bait has no idea you're doing it because the water comes all the way to the bottom side of the glass and any excess water goes through the center channel and out through drains in the stern of the boat. That's really key for sure. So yeah, that pressurization keeps that bait from sloshing around mm -hmm. like it's in a bucket or something like that. Correct. So let's talk about some of the storage and access on this boat. Tell me, Paul, what's going on underneath this lid right here? So this is your rear storage hatch. One of the things that went into the design process of this hatch is Craig and I looked at each other and said, well, what do we like and not like about competitive boats? One of the major things was this rear access hatch. The majority of them all hinge to the outside. Right. So when you're on the boat, it's no problem because you're in the boat. But if you're standing outside and you're trying to load this thing from the trailer, right. it makes it nearly impossible because right. you have to work around the hatch. 
So these hatches open to the stern. I noticed the hinges right here on the back, yeah. So with it opening to the stern, where you're standing from, you can access that no problem. You can access all of your gear, you can ins you, you can load more gear. Lift that up. And generous storage too. A lot of, lot of storage, plenty enough for uh, rain gear, you know, tackle boxes, you know, fillet knives, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's pretty deep in here. Correct. Yeah. So these storage, these storage bins are also insulated. So okay. they can be used as coolers. Oh, wow. Or we go back to that custom feature for our uh, customers. If you're a tournament fisherman and you're a tournament angler, you got your live bait in your center well, we can plumb these to become release wells. So you're saying you could have this set up to keep a couple nice tournament 25, 26 inch redfish in here. Absolutely. With a custom divider that goes diagonal in the uh, compartment, you can keep two solid redfish all day long. Beautiful, that's really cool. Now let's move on over here, your center access right here. This is gonna go to a lot of your plumbing and stuff. Uh, let's talk about that. It is, so one of the biggest things that you have in a skiff is not a lot of room. Right. Not a lot of access. So you, you have to work really hard to get into these places because they're mostly, you know, they're usually small. This bilge access is an enormous access. Really gives you access to everything. And everything is right within arm's reach. Nothing is tucked up underneath. It is all easily accessed. I see the pumps, I see the seacock, I see the jack plate reservoir and pump. There's a lot of good stuff just right there within arm's reach. I'm looking at this console right now and I'm loving it. I love the upholstery on the seating. I love this frigid, rigid cooler that matches uh, the gel coat color. Really nice feature, forward flipping cooler. It stays down in the wind. Good capacity, put plenty of Gatorades and water in there. What's your favorite part of the console area? So my favorite part of the console is the actual cockpit space. So this is traditionally, a, you know, flat skiffs are traditionally a two piece boat. So where this gunnel ends is where your walk space is. Right. This is a three piece build boat. So this allows you to have storage underneath, allows you to get, gives you more uh, walkability, more access for your feet. Uh, just having the amount of cockpit space in this boat is, uh, is my favorite part of it. And why do flats boats have this type of gunnel design? Why is that? Well, you wanna be able to access the front and the rear of the boat while you're fishing. Uh, especially if you're fishing in shallow waters and you're targeting a school of redfish or a school of snook and your boat's not really pointed in that right direction, you wanna be able to get from the front of the boat to the rear of the boat or vice versa, quietly and safely. Uh, so extra wide gunnels allow you to get from the front to the stern or vice versa, quietly and safely. Uh, one thing about this boat is the way the center of gravity is in it, it's very low. So when you walk on the side gunnels, the boat doesn't rock much. That is really key, that's key. Uh, minimal noise on the flats is it makes a big difference. Uh, it's hard to sneak up on those redfish or bonefish when you got a lot of hole slap and you got a lot of vibrations going into the water, a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And you know, moving around it to, to, from the front to the back, trying to target these fish, you don't want to be, you know, standing up and down in the boat all the time because that just makes noise. It does. So I hopped up here in the skiff and I'm loving this really well padded seat that flips back and forth here on the skiff. And looking ahead, they got this awesome hummingbird. What is this? A 15 inch screen. This is really nice. And I like the layout, this clean, smooth, simple layout. And the size of this, this console, I think is gonna give me a benefit of wind protection. Is that what you do? Is that what you're doing with this, with this uh, console? So that was design, the, the design of this console. Um, bringing the height up, not only allowed us to put a 15 inch hummingbird or up to a 16 inch uh, Simrad. Wow. It allows for wind deflection. There's no need to put an acrylic windshield up here. Again, we go back to some of those things we didn't you know, like on other boats is that acrylic windshield because over time the sun beats it and it crazes and it cracks and it like just salt. looks and it looks horrible yeah um you can't see through them so this allows the, the wind deflection to go right over the top of your head um, at wide open throttle no issues beautiful layout for a screen and it's super clean if you'll notice on this uh, console there's no engine gauges right so all of our boats come standard with the nema link in it Okay. So that all of your engine gauges are displayed on your screen. That is really key. And that cleans and saves space for sure. It cleans does. up the dash and saves a lot of space when you don't have to deal with those gauges. 
Man, I gotta see what's in this front storage hatch. Let's pop this baby open. Wow, look at that. Man, that is a cave in here. It's storage. The traditional skiff has a, has a fuel tank up here. Right. So you're very limited on access to what kind of storage you have there. Absolutely, I've seen that many times on skiffs. So our skiff has our fuel tank. We talked about that low center of gravity. It's actually between the stringers, like an offshore boat. Mm -hmm. So the center of gravity is low. The fuel tank is there, and that also allows us to give us a much bigger capacity of fuel. This boat actually comes with a 47 gallon fuel tank. That's pretty darn big for a flat skiff. It is. Again, by doing that and not having a fuel tank up here, that gives us plenty of storage. The other thing that it does is we go back to that serviceability. All of our batteries are right up here against this back wall here. So if you need to change a battery, you don't have to be a contortionist to get underneath the console. I have to do that right here on my boat. I have to get there. It's well, it's well placed, but you got to reach way in there. And the sometimes center. you have to take one battery out to get another battery out because yeah. it's just in the way. Absolutely. These are completely in line across, easily accessed and easily able to be replaced. Well, you got three great batteries mounted securely right here, right in that hatch. Uh, you know, two for this trolling motor right here. You got an 80 pound Minn Kota right here. Mm -hmm. And then you got one uh, crank and electronic battery right there. So this is a very clean setup for sure. And you still got a mountain of storage right here. The other side is, is we made this thing deep enough to hold a five gallon bucket. So you can actually put your cast nets in here in a bucket. They're not just lead weight, slap it against the bottom. You can actually that. keep them in their buckets while you're running. So here we are in the 18 flats boat mold. This is a piece of tooling that a lot of people never see. A lot of people have never been to a boat building factory. Uh, this is really cool. Tell us more about the evolution of this thing right here. So when it comes to tooling and molds and you, everything is thought of backwards. Hmm. Um, so a positive part is a negative in the mold and a negative mold is a positive part. So it's kind of a, a unique process when you're when you're building your molds and your tooling for it. So what you're saying is, in the mold, if the boat is supposed to have a raised edge, then in the mold it's going to have a negative, a negative below edge. Correct. So if you look at this, this is a we're we're in a a valley here. We're in, we're inside the mold. Well, once all of our materials are laid and we pull this thing out, it's a positive part. Hmm. So you have to kind of think of things backwards when you're talking about tooling and molds. Um, but yes, this is something that uh, most people don't really get to see. The reddish orange gel coat that you see is a specific kind of tooling gel that we use. Um, it's got different properties than a standard gel you would use for the actual hull side. Um, it's designed so that we can continually wax, spray gel coat, lay parts, pull it out and completely, you know, reuse this part wow. without having to re-gel coat every single time. How many different holes can you get out of this mold? Oh, this mold, you'll get thousands as long as you maintain it wow um, so we we have a, a strict mold care process so once we pull this part out of here um, before we'll even wax and gel coat the mold it goes through a, a rigorous quality control process to make sure that it is flawless for the next part and it's got to be flawless because i would think over time if you're not doing that then you'd have to you start to have little imperfections build up in the holes that are popping out of here absolutely and, and when you have that smooth shiny finish inside the mold once you, you know, and you have to remember when you, when you build a boat, you're building it from the outside in. Mm. So you start with gel coat. So, and then you put your layers of material and your coring as you go in. So when you spray that gel coat across this shiny mold, whatever the finish is here is what the finish is going to be to your outside boat. So wow. when you have a perfect mold, there's a lot less body work and finish work you have to do after it comes out of the mold. I've really loved checking out this boat, man. This is an awesome skiff. Paul, thanks for showing me the 18 flats My pleasure. boat. Really cool boat. Hey, check out blacktipboats.com if you're in the market for a flat skiff, a bay boat, or even a really awesome offshore boat that's in the works right now. Really cool uh, factory here in Pinellas Park. They've got a lot of good stuff going on. Definitely subscribe to Head First Fishing. Check out our sponsors, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters, and the Pike Consulting Group. Email headfirstfishing at gmail.com if you have any questions about fishing, or you can email, it's uh, sales at blacktipboats.com. If you have OSHA compliance questions or concerns, Pike Group's got you covered.